Welcome back. In the last video, you have seen that we can write the intensity of the diffracted beam as a sine square function. The intensity of the transmitted beam is 1 minus sine square, so it will be a cosine square function. So that the intensity of the transmitted beam is the conjugate of the diffracted beam. Let's plot Ig and I0 as a function of the sample thickness. Looking at Ig first, if you look at the x-axis or the horizontal axis that plots the intensity, if you look at the y-axis or the vertical axis that plots the sample thickness, for the intensity value, it oscillates between 0 and 1. For thickness, you can either view that as the sample thickness or where you are at in the sample through the thickness. Now looking at the diffracted beam intensity profile as a function of thickness, it follows the sine square curve. When t is equal to 0, there are two ways to look at it. The first way is that there's no sample at all. If there's no sample, there's no diffraction. If there's no diffraction, there's zero intensity in the diffracted beam. The second way to look at when t is equal to zero is that it's at the very top surface of the specimen. At the very top surface of the specimen, there's no diffraction going on. Again, the intensity of the diffracted beam is equal to zero. As the t value increases, you can see that the intensity of the diffracted beam initially increases, then falls back, and eventually reaches zero. The thickness value when the intensity falls back to zero is called the extinction distance, or C. What this tells you is that even when you tilt your crystal to the two-beam condition, that one set of planes are strongly diffracting, if the sample thickness is equal to the extinction distance, C the intensity of the diffracted spot will be equal to zero. You will not see the diffracted spot. This kind of observation is somewhat unique in TEM, and you don't really see it in the X-ray diffraction. The reason is because the scattering events in X-ray diffraction are mainly kinematical, while in TEM, due to the sample thickness, the dynamical effect can be pretty dominant. Further increase the sample thickness or further going through the thickness of the sample, the pattern follows and the intensity profile follows the sine square function. One thing I'd like to draw your attention to is that the intensity of the diffracted beam is at the maximum when it's half or an odd number multiplied by half Kc. Two examples are half Kc or 3 over 2 Kc. Plot I0 becomes easy. It's just 1 minus Ig, or the conjugate of Ig. If you look at the profile of the intensity of the transmitted beam, it also oscillates from 1 to 0. When the sample thickness is half Kc, or we're looking at a point in the sample which is half Kc, the intensity of the transmitted beam is equal to 0. So by playing with the sample thickness, you can make the transmitted beam disappear. When the sample thickness is Kc, or we are looking at a point at the position Kc in the sample, then the intensity of the transmitted beam is at its maximum. The most direct implication the dynamical approximation has on contrast is something we call thickness fringes. In TEM, due to the sample preparation methods, most of the samples we deal with they have the wedge shape. It's the thinnest near the edge, and it gets thicker as we go into the bulk material. In the dark field image, we use the diffracted beam to form the image. You can see it gets dark, bright, dark, bright, and dark again. The intensity profile follows the sine square function. If we look at the bright field image, where the image was formed by looking at the intensity of the diffracted beam, the contrast is reversed, so it's bright, dark bright, dark, bright, dark. The distance between each bright bands or dark bands is C, the extinction distance. Let's look at one real-life example. I took the image from the Joe website. The sample is the aluminum copper alloy, and the sample most likely is prepared by twin jet electro polishing. The brightest part is the vacuum. As you go into the sample, you can see the dark, bright, dark, bright, dark, bright. 
stripes, which are the thickness fringes caused by the dynamical diffraction. From the diffraction pattern, you can tell it's a two-beam condition, and the vacuum is bright, you know it's a bright field image. Dynamical diffraction can also help us to understand some peculiar contrast we see in dislocations. This dark field TEM micrograph was acquired by my student De Xing, and the bright lines are dislocations. One interesting feature to note is that the dislocations are not solid bright lines. The contrast actually alternates from bright to dark to bright to dark. You can see in another example here, and again, the contrast alternates. This observation indicates these dislocations are inclined through the thickness of the specimen, and the alternating contrast is due to the dynamical diffraction. I hope by now you have a good understanding on the dynamical diffraction in TEM and how dynamical diffraction affects the beam intensity for both the diffracted beam and the transmitted beam. But how did people know that the contrast of the diffracted beam follows the sine square function? This will be something I'm going to show you in the next video.